Hi, welcome to part three of Journey of the Heart, chapter eight, that we're committing with conscious commitment. So we're up to number so we're um up to number four, going beyond me first. Intimate relationships always ask us to give up something we cherish. Certain favorite privacies, preference, or ways of staying securely defended. They require us to take a leap beyond our usual style of defending our personal territory. So a further step in the development of an organic commitment is for a couple to explore their willingness to come out of hiding and leave behind old egocentric attitudes and behaviours. Going beyond a me-first attitude involves relaxing the demands and expectations I place on my partner, expanding my concern for her well-being and becoming more sensitive to the needs of the relationship as a whole, beyond what just feels personally safe and comfortable. In giving up territory and caring for my partner's well-being, I start to cast in my lot with, with them. I no longer, I am no longer the sole centre of my life. Those of us who find going beyond a me-first attitude difficult may be tempted to choose a way of life other than a committed relationship. Yet, if we deeply examine what is most important and satisfying in life, we may find that we feel most alive when we can step out of the confines of our usual self-absorption. The Russian theologian, theologian Sol, Solovov wrote that erotic love is the most powerful means for overcoming our usual habit of ascribing absolutely, absolute significance exclusively to ourselves while denying it to others. Recognizing the absolute significance of this other, we love who is wholly different from us, expands our horizons and opens us more light, fully to life as a whole. Number five, developing a vision and making a choice. The more two people help each other work with whatever arises, including the whole of themselves in their relationship and expand their boundaries, the more they appreciate how they are serving each other's unfolding. This helps them develop a clear vision of what they are doing together, which in turn allows them to make a conscious choice to be together. It is odd how many people wind up married without ever having consciously chosen to be in a committed relationship and remain in the marriage half-heartedly forever finding reasons for complaint and dissatisfaction. So it is important to see clearly what commitment involves. And if that is what we want to choose, it is a way of life. Then whatever difficulties arise can become part of our journey rather than reasons to complain or bail out. In former times, society and family conceived and held the vision of the man and woman relationship. Yet now that our society provides dream fantasies instead of workable guidelines, each couple must forge their own vision to guide and inspire them to keep moving forward. A vision that develops out of testing their relationship and seeing how they further each other's unfolding is a much stronger bond than any hope or obligation. Vision and conscious choice gives us a strength to keep going, even in times when our courage or confidence may wane. Commitment as a path. As path. If a couple can remain awake while moving through these stages, making a connection, working with what comes up, including all the different sides of themselves going beyond, me first, and forging a vision, their commitment will naturally be more conscious. If you trace what went wrong in a previous relationship or marriage that did not work out for you, you'll probably find that you got involved in it without really knowing what you were doing. Either your connection was not that strong to begin with, or else you did not know how to work with the difficulties that arose. Now imagine doing it differently the next time. You feel a deep, passionate resonance with your partner, and you both care about each other's unfolding. You test things out for a couple of years until you are satisfied that you can work with whatever comes up and include all of yourself in the relationship. You are both learning to give of yourselves and stretch your boundaries. You develop a strong vision about why you are together in such a case. What would prevent you from sharing a life together? Conscious commitment is a pact between beings rather than between personalities. In effect, your partner and yourself say to each other, whatever problems our personalities have together, we will not let them get between us. If our egos are at war, we will not let that ruin our deeper connection. We will always come back and meet on this deeper level. We will help each other wake up and become all that we can be. We will keep opening to each other and to life itself in and through this relationship. 
Without such an alliance between our beings, our egos will likely conspire to perpetuate old habitual patterns, and the container we create may become a prison or a hollow shell. Conscious commitment is to being together, not just staying together. Of course, two partners may connect deeply on the being level, yet still be unable to work things out on the personality level. That is why the testing stage is so important. If they cannot find ways to work on things together, it means that their personality conflicts are more powerful than their being connection. Therefore, they cannot move toward greater commitment. When Oraj, a student of the Russian teacher Gurdjieff, wrote that a great love can both take hold and let go, he was expressing the heaven and the earth and heaven of conscious commitment. Letting go means creating a large open space in which we can let ourselves and our partner be as we are. Taking hold means working with whatever comes up in that space. Yet, if working on the relationship becomes too serious and earthbound, it will weigh a couple down, just as a plant that is over-fertilized will wilt. So a relationship that is fussed over too much will suffer. This is where letting go can provide balance, often through humor. We can create plenty of room in a relationship to kid ourselves and each other and laugh at the gap between our lofty ideals and how we actually are. Conscious commitment keeps us awake for it involves continually finding our balance on the edge of taking hold and letting go. Above all, it is important not to be too idealistic about all, all this. Force anything on ourselves or try to be ahead of where we are really are. Approaching commitment as a should only makes us go unconscious, setting us up for further difficulties or failures. There is a Tibetan saying, knowledge must be burnt, hammered and beaten like pure gold. Then one can wear it as an ornament. In the same vein, we could say commitment must be burned, hammered and beaten like pure gold. Then it can display itself as marriage. Those of us who undertake this journey are having to learn something new. How to let commitment evolve naturally. Through many ups and downs, steps forward and back. Our uncertainty about whether we can handle all the challenges along the way is not a problem, for it is part of the path itself. I was heartened in this regard by the words of Shokyam Tung Trungpa, a Tibetan teacher who was once asked how he managed to escape the Chinese invasion, trekking across the snowbound Himalayas with little preparation, supplies or insurance about the route or the outcome. His reply was brief, one foot after the other. Okay, so that's it for us at this time don't forget to check the links down below check the links on my channel like subscribe and ring the bell so you know when the next video will be uploaded take care and blessed be